I'm the hardest working guy that, that doesn't talk about it. So basically, I don't take any days off as far as working out. First thing in the morning time is you have to build your confidence. And every day you're constantly gaining and losing confidence. You're never staying the same. So how you build your confidence is if you like what you see in that mirror, that's how you start your day off. If you wake up and you, and you look fat, you look out of shape, you're not feel good, which is, you know, or you don't feel good inside. So my whole big thing is get up and work out, shed some calories, get the adrenals going, get the mind going, get all that going. Every day I run, every day I work out. A lot of people, what they do is they have these, these finish lines. And I have a saying that says, I don't stop when I'm tired, I stop when I'm done. When I was uh, younger, I didn't have any goals. It's not really so much about goals, it's just a to-do list, a to-do list. And as a human being, if you don't have a to-do list, you're gonna sit back and just fade away. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. If you can't control your own brain, you gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. If not, it's over. A good human being, a fulfilled human being, doesn't need to break anyone down. All they do is wanna build you up. So anybody you meet that calls you out of your name, that bullies you, that messes you up, that, that makes you feel not lifted, they are dealing with something deep-rooted. When you quit, your mind says we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind, it says he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow, we gotta figure this thing out. So then these compartments in your brain, they have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. When you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not gonna quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to, but then it becomes used to it. The only way anything gets accomplished, you gotta work hard. I can't remember what's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again, still not getting it, read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And guess what happened? I got it. I can't swim, I'm negative buoyant. Go back again, I can't swim. Go back again, go back again, go back again. I got it. I realize if I keep going back and going back and going back, your mind will say, okay, we're gonna figure it out because he is not going to stop. I always equated working out to struggle. I struggled my whole life, but I ran from it. So I started realizing, man, I gotta start facing the struggle and I gotta be mentally strong for the struggle. I'm training for life. Mentally, I'm training for life. I'm not training for like to, to lift 400 pounds. And I found out on my own pretty much is that through this, through, through discipline, through self-discipline, through repetition, through tons of repetition, the same thing that you don't wanna do, you develop mental armor for your mind. You start to armor your mind, because your mind's like, okay, we suffer, we suffer every day. We do stuff that sucks every day, so then when the suck stuff comes, you're ready for it. I had two options, to either be that 300 pound guy who sprayed for cockroaches and made $1,000 a month, or I can totally just fail and fail and fail until I succeed. So I started calling recruiters up. I said, I'm gonna go beat the Navy SEAL. There's a weight and height limit to get in the military. And I was six foot one and 297. He saw me, put me through the weight standard, all this other stuff. And to get into the class I had to get into, I had to lose 106 pounds in less than three months. I was like, I can't do that. I grabbed my chocolate milkshake and went back to Ecolab. And I said, this ain't gonna be it for me. I quit my job and I went home. And I started working out like somebody. I was, I became the most obsessed person on the planet Earth. I had to invent a guy that can take any pain, any suffering, any kind of judgment, and I built it through suffering. And I started realizing through this, through this process, and I started opening different doors. And the more doors I opened up, the more I started realizing that my potential is damn near endless. It changed my whole mindset. We all want to read about how we can quickly get somewhere. That's why the six minute abs and all this are so powerful. You may get some results from it, but they're not permanent. The permanent result comes from you. You have to suffer. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain, 
and your brain controls you. You're f I have this haunting voice in the back of my head. We, a lot of us have it. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. I knew that, but I, I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was gonna be something that I didn't wanna even, even attack. So I was just put it off. It haunted me. That's what I realized for myself was I wanted that comfort zone that everybody looks for, that pat on the back. They don't want to hear all the bad, they want to hear everything that they're doing right. And I realized that's what kept me in this world. That's what kept me in this world of not accomplishing anything. What I did was I became that big, bad, nasty that you don't want to walk into at nighttime. I became the roughest critic in the world on myself. And that's what changed me. I literally saw myself in the mirror I saw the truth versus saying, you know, my dad did this to me from, you know, from beating me. My life did this to me. My broken foundation did this to me. I took that and said, you know what? Well, some people may help this happen, but now I have to own this.